Fractals truly are fascinating mathematical objects and are also very easy to render. In this video, I will present you a simple way to render high quality fractals and how to create a smooth deep zoom. I will focus on escape time fractals, where a sequence of complex numbers is used to determine the shape of the object. The principle behind this kind of fractals is very straightforward. This seemingly simple sequence will be at the foundation of all our rendering process. It is super easy to compute and can be programmed like this. Now, we will choose an arbitrary initial complex number and iterate on the sequence until the mod of an element is greater than 2 or we reach the 50th element. The code could be written like this. At the end of the loop, we can map the resulting number of iterations to a gradient. Let's run this algorithm for each pixel of an image, using their respective coordinates as the sequence's input and use the previous gradient to affect each of them a color. The result isn't very pretty at this level of resolution. Let's increase the number of pixels. We already have a high quality fractal. However, because we use the iteration count, which is an integer, to colorize pixels, the resulting image isn't very smooth. There is a simple fix for this. Instead of using the raw integer value of the iteration count, we can apply this operation and return the float value. This is much cleaner, but we can see that pixels are quickly saturated, because for a lot of them, we reach the threshold of 50 while iterating on the sequence. To reveal more details of our fractal, we can simply increase the maximum number of iterations. Here, I increased it to 500. I am using the CPU to perform the rendering. It could also be done with the GPU and very easily. This is close to an hello world for shaders. Performance is also excellent, as expected, since this is the perfect use case for a graphic card. We can use this shader to quickly visualize the variety of shapes offered by the Julia set when we vary the constant C. Despite all these advantages, I decided to stick to the CPU because double precision compute is either not supported or have terrible performance on most GPUs. And with simple precision float, the maximum zoom is quite low. So far, we've only used a simple gradient to compute pixels colors but we could use a multicolor gradient instead. The 
Despite the fact that we are rendering our fractal with high definition, it contains a lot of aliasing. This is to be expected because, by nature, fractals contain unlimited amount of details, unlike our screens and their finite numbers of discrete pixels. Fortunately, we can mitigate this very easily, but it won't be free. The problem here is that we are strongly subsampling the fractal by computing the color of each pixel, and because of this, the correlation between pixels' colors is very low in some areas. To help with this, we can simply average multiple samples for each pixel, instead of just considering the point at its center. The obvious downside of this approach is that it multiplies the time required to render a pixel by the number of samples. The image is now looking much better, but is also 16 times slower to render. Thankfully, rendering is often very easy to parallelize, and this one is no exception. To mitigate the effect of the super sampling, we can use several threads to compute pixel color in parallel. Even with multi-threaded rendering, the time required to render a frame is way higher than a few milliseconds. A trick that can be used to perform fluid navigation is to have the next frame being rendered in the background while the current one is displayed and transformed according to the camera. And here is the result. It is not magic, camera movements have to be kept to avoid cropped rendering, but at least it is usable. Now, let's see how far double precision can bring us 